Hey, what's going on guys? Gazi back again here and welcome back to another Genshin Impact Guide. Today we're going to do things a little different instead of gameplay. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at the new character Albedo that's coming out in roughly 9 days, so a week and a little bit more. We're going to be taking a look at his main stats, ascension, skills, past pretty much everything to cover Albedo. This entire guide is going to be based off a of level 80 Albedo with level 6 talents because that is the most accessible and I want to say baseline for most people playing out there because 90 is a bit too high and a lot of, it's like a big gap of materials and mora. So as we look at his base stats, I'm not too sure about what's high and what's low, but here it is if you guys want to know. He is a Geo character, I will note that Albedo is going to be based off defense and he is going to be a support. Most likely you, you don't want to build him <laughs> normal attack or anything like that. Um, we have the Geo damage bonus as 21%, crit rate crit damage are unchanged, and I'm assuming his defense set is pretty high, I'm not too sure, but let's go with it. As for ascensions, we are going to be using the Geo fragments from the Hypostasis. Basalt Pillars and the Cecilia Flowers, everything's going to be scrolling across the screen if you guys don't know exactly what they are. The ones in red are the talents that you're going to use when you're trying to get past level 6. Uh, with the corresponding ones, this would be 7, 8, 9, and 10. As for the talents, we're going to be using Teaching of Valid. These are pretty much what's going to be required if you guys want to prepare for him. Now, on to his skills. Let's go ahead and take a look. His normal attack isn't anything special, basic normal attack. It's actually rather low, 53%, 53, 68, 72, and 90. It's not necessarily good at all in my opinion. Do not even touch this. There's nothing special about it. So for his elemental skill, Solar Isotoma. It's an 8 second cooldown. Uh, you press it, and if you hold it, you, that's how you aim it. I color-coded everything and put it all in simple terms. He creates an Isotoma on the field, does 182% damage and it lasts 30 seconds. So this could pretty much have 100% uptime guaranteed because 30 seconds and an 8 second cooldown, there's no there's no reason to not have this up. So for the Solar Isotoma properties, when enemies take damage in the zone, it creates a transient blossom dealing AoE Geo damage scaled with his defense. So here's where the main stats and artifacts and all that other fancy stuff come in. You want to build him defense to make the most out of his elemental skill. This does 132% of his defense, so building attack wouldn't necessarily do much in this case. Transient Blossoms can only be created every 2 seconds. When you stand in the middle of the Isotoma, it creates an elevator that you can kind of rise up, shoot things down, or just plunge attack. Only one can be created at a time, and it is a Geo Construct, so if you do have Zhang Li, it will be resonating. So, sum it up, he places down an Isotoma, little thing on the ground. If you stand in the middle, it puts an elevator. Uh, if enemies take damage within the Isotoma, they create a flower that does damage that is based off of his defense. Now for his ultimate, Tectonic Tide, it is a 12 second cooldown move on a 40 energy cost, so this is very spammable. This is something you want to use all the time. Uh, pretty much it summons Geo Crystals and does 514% damage, that's Geo damage, so pretty much nothing too crazy, just does damage. Now if you are in a Isotoma zone, it creates 7 Fatal Blossoms, this is different from the Transient Blossoms, so it creates Fatal Blossoms dealing AoE damage, this is based off attack instead of your defense. If you do use your ult, you want to be in the Isotoma field, there's no reason not to, you should have it up all the time, it is on a 30 second duration, and the cooldown's 8 seconds, so there's no reason why it shouldn't be up. And Fatal Blossoms does not create Transient Blossoms, so pretty much it does AoE damage uh, when you use it, when you're in the field it creates Blossoms that does even more damage uh, as Geo damage, so most of his kit is pretty much Geo damage, so all you really want to do is have Geo damage bonus maybe some attack bonuses. We'll get into the builds and artifacts in a second, but the way you'd play him is you'd probably pop him in, put the Isotoma, pop in the Tectonic Tide, switch back out. When the duration is about to end, you put another Isotoma, and you're going to be getting energy charge over and over again because he is going to be the one doing the damage. Now for his passives and constellations. So his first passive, when he crafts a weapon ascension material, he has a 10% chance to double it. It's good for, it's like Sucrose and all that other, all those other people that have a chance. It's, you know, it's just a nice little bonus. For his second passive, Transient Blossoms generated by Isotoma deals 25% more damage to enemies whose HP is below 50. So this is just another extra damage, nothing too crazy. His third, Tectonic Tide increases elemental mastery of nearby party members by 125 for 10 seconds. Now this is where things get a little different. If you have him and Sucrose, you can pretty much boost your team's elemental mastery super high. You skyrocket that because they both increase your team's elemental mastery. Now, if you have Wandering Troop, Wanderer's Troop, and everything, if you really want to make an elemental mastery team, Albedo is the one to go because 125 boost on the ult for 10 seconds, and the ult is on a 12 second cooldown. 
With 40 energy costs, everyone's pretty much going to have the 125 elemental mastery uptime almost all the time. You have 2 second downtime, but this is something that will really make him a good support. As for his constellations, for C1, I really think this is good. C1 is not bad at all. Uh, regenerate 1.2 energy every time transient blossoms like explode or uh, spawn. So that is 1.2 energy every two seconds if they're like they're if they're constantly taking damage. Again, it is on a 40 second cooldown, so this is gonna actually put a I wouldn't say major, but a moderate difference in how fast he's gonna get it. It's not it's not gonna make it like go even faster, but it is a constant recharge with uh, the ultimate. Now for a second constellation, when transient blossoms spawn and do damage, Albedo is gonna get a stack of Fatal Reckoning, and this lasts 30 seconds, and you get up to four, uh, increasing his damage by 30% based on his defense. So if it's Stacks up to four times. If it's all linear buffs, then he's gonna have up to 120 percent attack increase based on his defense, which is kind of crazy in my opinion. I think a C2 will really make him start doing extra damage uh, with his skills. If you really like, I think this is gonna be the real game changer, the Fatal Reckoning, because transient blossoms are gonna spawn like crazy. So Fatal Reckoning is gonna get to that four stacks, and by the time you even get to your next cast of Tectonic Tide, you're gonna have all four stacks. He will be doing a lot more when you have the C2. Now for a C3 and a C5, you know, it pretty much does the basic increases as elemental skill and elemental burst. Now for his C4, Isotoma increases plunge attack damage by 30% for all party members. Now, if you guys don't know, Xiao, this would be really, really good with the Zhao. So if you ever plan on getting him, this would not be a bad idea to pull. Because Zhao, his ultimate, gives him like the really increased jump and the plunge attack and increased damage. This is going to make him do a lot more damage. So in my opinion, if you are going to go for summoning Zhao, Albedo would be a really good support to pair with him. But other than that, if, it, if you don't plan on pulling for Zhao, or it is what it is, uh, this is not really too much of a difference. Now for his last constellation. To put it simply, if you're in the zone and you have a shield, created by crystallize then your damage gets increased this one it's kind of iffy it's kind of just i don't know i'm not sure if it's c6 worthy i honestly i feel like this his second constellation would be a better c6 but honestly i'm not complaining if they put it up here because this one doesn't do too much of an increase this is kind of just you know extra damage why not I, i'd say the c2 just gets you get a lot more value than a c6 those are his constellations pretty good I recommend a C2 in my opinion, like like I said, I really think this Fatal Reckoning buff is going to make his DPS output extremely good. Now for his artifact builds and weapons, I'm taking a look at all the weapons, Skyward Blade, Festering Desire, Iron Sting, and Traveler's Handy Sword, all three different tiers just in case, you know, some of you aren't as high level. Skyward Blade for the energy recharge, and you know, all the little fancy buffs here. The main reason is the energy recharge. I think this is going to be really good for him to spam the ult even more, make sure 100% that he's going to get his ult off the cooldown. Festering Desire, this is going to be the new weapon. This is, all the information is based on Honey Impact. But if this is the case, I think this is going to be his best weapon. Increases elemental skill damage by 16, and elemental skill crit rate by 6. I think this is going to be the best weapon, in my opinion, for him. Iron Sting increases elemental mastery. Uh, dealing elemental damage increases damage by 6% for 6 seconds, so uh, this is pretty good, nothing too crazy, elemental mastery. Now for the Traveler's Handy Sword, this one is easily refinable. This is a defense percent, this is the only defense percent weapon sword. If you're low level and you don't have any of the 4 stars or 5 star, I think this would be a good option. It increases his HP every elemental orb and particle that you get. As for his artifact builds, I really, really suggest these ones right here. We have Archaeatric Petra, 15% geo bonus damage. Noblest Oblige, increase the elemental burst damage. Uh, Defender's Will is if you're not level 40 yet or you can't get any 5 star artifacts, I think this is good just for the 30% defense. Now for the 4 piece Archaeatric Petra, I don't think this is necessary, but if you have good rolls on it, might as well use it. I think you should use a 2 piece Archaeatric Petra and a 2 piece Noblest. If not, you could use a 4 piece Noblest, this wouldn't be bad either, because it increases the attack even more whenever you use it. Since the effect lasts 12 seconds, the 20% attack increase is going to be pretty much have 100% uptime. 4 piece Noblest not too bad. Two piece archaeatric, two piece noblest is also good. And this one, only if you only if you don't have access to the other two, then you should go for the two piece defender as well. Now, if you have gladiator set, yeah, it would just be a good general increase in damage. But I just think having noblest or archaic petra would just give you more 
value instead of the 18% increase. Now for the main stats, energy recharge, geo damage bonus, defense or crit rate. Uh, I think these are the best. I know defense percent isn't here, but I think if you have enough energy recharge, if you can get the uptime 100% without the main set energy recharge, you should change this to defense percent instead of energy recharge. But this, this varies depending on what artifacts and weapons you have, because if your energy recharge is low and you're not getting the uptime 100%, then you should put energy recharge main stat. But if you do have uptime 100% without this one, you should put defense percent, because again, the skills are based off of it and you do more damage. So energy recharge, geo damage, this is a must have. Honestly, it's not debatable. You, it's like a must have. And for the last one, defense percent or crit rate. Personally, I like to build crit rate and crit damage on everything I have. Uh, it's just, I, I think that just does more damage and gives you more value instead of just flat attack increase. As for substats, we have defense, energy recharge, elemental mastery, and as for HP, this is this is kind of interchangeable in my opinion. I, I'd say you can put it as attack percent or crit rate or crit damage in my opinion. There's nothing too crazy about the last one, last substat. Personally, I would go for crit rate, crit damage, defense, and attack. Um, again, energy. Re the only reason energy recharge is because you want to get that uptime. Elemental mastery, I, I actually don't think that would be too too good. Unless you have a C6 and you want to get the strongest shield you can out of crystallization and get that damage buff and you know make it last longer, then you could go for elemental mastery. But I really think crit rate percent would be good. Crit damage percent would also be good. I think this is exactly what I'd go for. These are pretty much identical. Energy recharge or attack. Okay, so I modified it a little bit. We have crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge or attack, and then defense percent defense percent would be good but yeah this is the build i would go for on albedo the reason why i build crit rate is because while the transient blossoms are being created they can crit dealing even more damage in conclusion i think albedo is going to be something pretty good in my opinion i overlooked him a bit i really thought he wasn't going to be as good but the more i look into his character and how to use him kind of just a pop in pop out character putting putting him with sucrose wouldn't be a bad idea either although geo and animo don't really have a combination they don't really do anything if you have two other characters say fire and water like a child and Klee or mona and deluke you can combine those and get some really good value if you have Albedo and Sucrose on your team because they're gonna increase the elemental mastery a lot. Albedo, I think he's gonna be good. Should you guys pull for him? It's based off your team and what you really like your playstyle to be, or if you really need a character to just pop in and out. Again, Albedo's not gonna be the character that you put in and he's just gonna keep fighting, keep fighting because again, his normal attack is not, not the greatest. You know, you'll get a lot more value by just switching him back and forth. Same thing goes with Zhang Li. I know a lot of people say build him support, his attack isn't good. It's kind of going to be the same case. It's going to be a low percent. So I recommend using the character as intended, being that pop in, pop out character, having some really good damage. So he's going to have a lot of good geo damage. The thing with Albedo, his attacks are going to be on the field all the time. Whether he's in or out, the majority of his damage is going to be there. So the Solar Isotomo with a 30 second duration, Whoever you use, the transient blossoms are always going to deal that geo damage. It's not like you need albedo on the field all the time. So you're going to get more value having another main DPS on the field, creating those blossoms, creating energy recharge for albedo without even having to be there. It's just more optimal to pop in, pop out. That I know I'm saying that a lot, but that's pretty much how his character is kind of built and when you pop in his tectonic tide it's just going to do a burst of damage with the fatal blossoms that is albedo if you guys have any questions or suggestions let me know in the comments below tell me how you're going to build your albedo or if you're going to summon for him let me know that in the comments below thank you guys for watching hopefully this helped you out with understanding albedo a bit more i know in honey impact the wording can be a little iffy and hard to understand hopefully this made it a little easier hopefully you guys enjoy and i'll see you guys in the next video peace